And welcome back to Dominican Rendezvous. Today, I want to talk about Lionel the Loser. Lionel the Loser. But before I get there, I just wanted to say thank you so much for those of you who have continued to tune into this channel and to listen to these videos. I hope you're getting some valuable information, valuable content that would help you understand the Dominican Republic much better. It's my pleasure to do it. It's a hobby. It's my interest. And I, again, I just hope that you are finding it enjoyable. Please subscribe, please share the video channel to others who may be interested. I do appreciate it and certainly by all means hit that like button uh, at the end of the video if you found yourself liking uh, this video and the content. Okay, so today I want to talk about Lionel the Loser. Lionel the Loser. And as you probably seen in a few videos back, I talked about the elections that were held in early October. Uh, in the Dominican Republic, it was the primaries, if you will, for the major political parties to nominate their candidates. And in the PLD, there were two candidates who were running, a former president, three-time president, um, as well as the president of the PLD, uh, ex-president Leonel Fernandez, and he was running against Gonzalo Castillo. Now, Gonzalo Castillo, Castillo was handpicked by the current president, who is part of the PLD, the, the, um, the uh, Liber Dominican Liberation Party, if you will. And um, he handpicked Gonzalo to run against Lionel uh, Fernandez. Now, it was a tight race, uh, although during the race, many have predicted that Lionel would win. Polls have showed that he had a commanding lead and that he would pretty much uh, clean up uh, in the PLD. But as it turns out, it didn't work out quite that way. Um, friends told me that he was so confident and so assured that he would be not only the next nominee of that particular party, but he would be the next president of the Dominican Republic. However, if you haven't heard, he lost. And it was big news, and it has been big news for the last uh, week or so. Now, he claims that there was electoral fraud, of course, vote counting fraud, uh, missing votes, etc., uh, people voting that shouldn't have voted, perhaps, all of that kind of stuff that happened. It's kind of almost like the Hillary Clinton debacle where everybody sort of appointed her to be the new president of the United States even before the votes were cast, and then we all know what happened. She lost, and he, like Hillary Clinton, lost their rights to the throne, so to speak. So the question is, why did he lose? Why did he lose? And from my opinion, and from what I've seen, and what I've read, and what I've come to understand in conversations with other people that I've talked to in the Dominican Republic, he lost basically because of his pride. He thought that it was a done deal. He thought that because he was a three-time ex-president, as well as president of the PLD, that he was a shoo-in, that it was a cakewalk. But he did not understand, perhaps, and I believe, that his time was over. I think people have realized that he had his chance. He had served the country and has served the country quite well. Um, but in his mind, he didn't feel his time was up or over. Perhaps it was ambition. Perhaps he was too ambitious um, and very proud. He refused to turn over the reins to new blood, to um, a new person, in this case, Gonzalo Castillo, or perhaps maybe some others that were probably uh, vying for that position. His wife, as I've told you before, is the current vice president of the country. And that is also quite interesting because of what has subsequently happened. And I'll get to, to that in just a, mi a minute. But his wife, Mar Mar Margarita Cadeno, is very popular. It was very popular. And many had thought that she would probably take the um, party nomination and run for president and eventually become president. But um, she did not run. Um, he fought with the current president, Danilo Manito. Danilo Medina. Um, they argued over several things. They really didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things, and he decided to run anyway. And as I said, uh, Medina, President Medina, uh, cast his support behind Gonzalo Castillo, who ultimately won. I think he under, underestimated his competition, um, which is uh, the the. Uh, the uh, symmetry, if you will, between uh, the current president and the candidate Gonzalo Castillo. I don't think he quite understood uh, what was going on with that, as well as he didn't perhaps 
run a good campaign. Um, some say that he just didn't really campaign to the best that he should have um, and to places where he should have campaigned. Again, very similar to the United States past election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And so ultimately, he just couldn't beat his competition. And so now, uh, the last couple of days, we found out that um, ex-president Leonel Fernandez has left the PLD. He has left the party of which he was president. And there have been several other defections from the party of uh, people of, of notoriety, of, of fame, if you will, of big names, popular names, who have left and joined with him uh, to basically say that the PLD is corrupt. All of a sudden, uh, they're, they're corrupt and we don't want anything to do with them. That's what the general sense is of what um, he is saying. So now he leaves the, pro the, the, the party of which he was the president, which he was a part of for, for many, many, many years. Now, as far as I know, as of this recording, his wife, who is the current vice president with Danilo Medina, who is his now arch enemy number one, um, is still the vice president. And she's still hanging around Danilo Medina. Now, who knows what's going to happen in the next coming days. Um, if something does happen, I'll be happy to uh, bring that information to you as I understand it. But um, it's quite interesting how his wife is still connected to the man who he you know, really doesn't like, which is the current president of the uh, Dominican Republic. So why did he lose? I think he lost simply again because of his um, inability to understand that his time was up and, there, and that the country perhaps is looking for a change. And we're going to see how much of a change that is going to be in the coming elections in 2020. He left the party simply because of his hatred, his resentment, um, his acts of, 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 of despisement, if that's the right word, against what had happened to him uh, in the party, in the elections. And that was basically it. So he's left the party, and I said, as, he's, as I said, he's got other people with him that he's forming a coalition with that have left the party. And he's trying to form a coalition. Uh, some of the other minor parties are, are kind of um, uh, asking him to, hey, let's join all together so that we can dethrone uh, the P PLD. And we're going to see um, if, in fact, that happens. If he joins with the P, uh, the PRSC, which is the Socialist Christian Party, or with the PRM, the Revolutionary Modern Party, under Louis Abinadad. So we'll see. Um, and just stay tuned and see what happens. But in the meantime, I hope that for those of us who are following uh, the Dominican Republic's government, politics, etc., and those of us that are interested, you know, let's let's congratulate Lionel for fighting a good fight. He was pretty much a good, decent president. There are some corruption things that, um, that plagued him to a certain extent, but he did serve his country for three terms and we should be thankful um, for that and for him for doing that. And so that's the latest, um, as far as I can see, uh, right now in the electoral uh, process in the Dominican Republic. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you find it useful. Uh, for those of you who are political junkies like me, perhaps you'll like uh, uh, this and start following it. From me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.